mostly a stand-up comic okay yeah just like do you like it I love it you know I waited till I was 63 to do this really that's amazing good for you yeah I'm I'm slow (laughs) (laughs) no you're not can't use the r word anymore but (laughs) (laughs) it did get a laugh didn't it (laughs) remember the good old days when you could say the R word and Trump was a verb. Good old days when you could just make fun of more people more vulnerable than you. No, I'm so glad we've moved on from that. That's great. You know, it's like. Totally. I'm, yeah. I mean, but, you know, it doesn't stop like young white male comics from like, you know, doing sets about how women are dumb. But yes. that's okay. <laughs> That's okay. And penis <laughs> jokes, they and just never. Yeah, they just never. Yeah, that's right. They got uh-huh. so many of them. So many. And, you know, like some people are 40 years in the business still doing them. Oh, oh, yes. I, uh, I know you are correct about that. <laughs> yes. I get a kick out of people that don't dig deep for the funny, you know? Yeah, you know, like I feel... Um, that's something I'm always still working on, you know, it's like, I, 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 I'm, I'm like relatively new to stand up too. like, I'm mostly my background is as an actor. So I would say relatively new that I've been doing it on and off for about 10 years. Um, and more now that we have that this is going on, you know what I mean? Like, yes, because you can't do theater, we can't do theater really. And film production is really hard. So I feel like stand up works pretty well, you know, in this medium. Also, um, improv as well has been really fun. And I teach acting classes. I over saw here. that. Yeah, yeah, it's super fun. But like, but in terms of the writing, you know, about digging deeper, I think that's a really great point. I feel like um, I have circles of female stand up comics that I work with and that we like meet every week. And you know, it's always just like, we're just trying every week to try to like dig deeper. I think you're right. I think it's the funny is obviously it's, it's when you can be, I really appreciate when, when comics can be vulnerable um, and also be funny. Right. But yes. uh, how to, to sort of strike that balance is very interesting to me. So yeah. Yeah. And I'm, a, I'm a baby boomer. So I was raised in the time where we didn't have a voice we couldn't speak up. We could not say no. There was no Me Too movement. There was no, you know, we had a woman's movement, but did it really move? I don't know. Right. <laughs> you got to vote. Yeah. That's a good, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. So thing, uh, there's a lot of things changing. I agree. I mean, I still feel like, um, you know, doing doing improv and doing stand up in Chicago, which is where I, you know, learned. A second city. Yeah, uh, uh, yes, and um, and Improv Olympic too, and uh, and then also I took um, in Chicago. I took the Feminine Comique, which is I don't know if it's the only, but it may be the only, or maybe was the first all women's stand up comedy class taught by Cameron Esposito, um, and that was great for me. And I, I don't think that I would have done it otherwise if I hadn't had a supportive group of women because I just. I don't know. I just, it took me a really long time and I think I'm still trying to find it, that sort of confidence, right? That, um, where you're like, yes, I am. You know, now I I do believe that because I see it in so many other women. I'm like, yeah, I don't know why there was ever a debate or ever a question that women were extremely funny, right? Like just as funny, if not funnier than men. Um, but, uh, yeah, it took me, I, I feel like I internalized that. A lot you know that idea of like I'm not funny or something I don't know where I got it from certainly wasn't from my family they were so supportive of me and my parents right. are like the best but yeah and my sister's great and like my friends are great but I don't know I think it was just something from society that I internalized right exactly and, and hard thing to get over you know what I love doing I love interviewing people with improv and acting skills the interviews are much more fluid Oh, really? Oh, great. That's so yeah. great. Do so you interview cool. a lot of improvisers? 
These you days? get them from time to time. And when they out themselves, then I'm like, totally. And if they don't out themselves, I can kind of tell. Oh yeah. What makes you, uh, what can you tell? Like what, what is the, the, well, let's say that the computer has a glitch, they go with it or, oh, yeah. or I'll say something and I might say it incorrectly. They like one person I had on here, he had 14, 150 million views on his dry bar. And I said, 14 million and he's not improv. So this didn't go well. <laughs> oh, wow. Yikes. If it had been an improv person or someone with acting, you'd say, oh, that's okay. It happens all, you know, something, you know, give me sure. something. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I love that about improv. Like the idea of like, uh, you go with whatever is there, right? You know, like what everything that you give me or that my partner gives me is a gift, right? And so I just accept it and roll with it because, um, you know, what's the point of trying to have control over any of this stuff? You know what I mean? Thank you. <laughs> and we should also look at uh, improv as the things that come into our mind to remember. I mean, oh. anything we remember to say is a gift. I, I happen to have survived a, a drunk driving accident in 1996, and it took me till six months ago not to use notes on stage. So anything's a gift. Wow, that's incredible. Good for you. Thank you. That's talk amazing. to me. Talk to me about second just second city. I mean, oh my gosh, groundlings, yeah. second city. I'm I mean huge. And what a legacy they've created in America. Yeah, so um so right now like classes are virtual because uh you know, we're we're in phase 4 in Chicago, I believe right now. I don't know where Vegas is, but um, I believe the only class is two. Oh, wow. So everything's, is that, does that mean that you're closer to opening or further from opening? Further. Okay. So it's like, it's like the DEF CON. Oh, it's the reverse of the DEF CON, right? I don't know. Yes. Maybe I'm wrong. About I know that. what you mean. Like DEF yeah. CON one is like the worst. Um, so, okay. So yeah. So you guys are shut down. So we, uh, the only classes I believe that are happening at Second City are the kids camps. So right now everything's happening virtually. So there may be, I, I don't even know how that's going to go, but there, you know, it's, there's a lot of distance in the building and I haven't been down there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, so second city is going through a lot of changes right now, right? There's a lot of restructuring happening. Um, you know, they're, they're trying to, I think, um, you know, they're trying to take everything really seriously in terms of, um, you know, trying to be anti-racist and, uh, you know, just sort of combat many years of systemic racism, which is, that's sort of the, uh, unfortunately, a lot of predominantly white institutions are facing a reckoning with that sort of thing. But uh, with that aside, I, I, um, you know, as a as a woman in improv, if we go back to that, you know, obviously there there's been it when there's when there's mostly when it's a, a boys club. Sometimes you can, you know what I mean, and a white you know man's club, and also you know these these places these clubs are, they you know they do want to make money. So like I O is the same, you know, and I O just recently closed, and that's where I trained and where I I was an intern there. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I, I really loved, I mean, I really loved the improv and the comedy scene in Chicago. My teacher, uh, who began the stand up program, uh, at second city. And then he was my comedy writing teacher at IO, Michael McCarthy, who, uh, passed away this past year. Um, he, he, you know, he likened Chicago to like, you know, P Paris in the twenties. He was like, it's, it's such a wonderful place, uh, of comedy and uh, it is, it really is. And everyone that I've met at Second City has been incredible. Um, I love the vibe and the, the sort of, it's, you know, it's, it's based in Viola Spolin, right? And uh, Paul Sills, uh, you know, uh, and um, so it's the spirit behind it is pure. And it's not about, you know, Viola Spolin was, a, was about, you know, she was, she was actually like trying to have uh, play theater games with kids who didn't speak the same language, you know? Um, and so they, that the idea was that you just kept the game going, right? So you have to accept everything that comes your way because if we're going to play like little kids, 
you know, we, the, the goal is to keep it going, right? So we have to agree to that world and we have to accept our partner and we have to, you know, um, just basically agree to things that come our way and say, I see you and I acknowledge you and I hear you, right? And I'm get, gonna add a little bit of information into this, right? But, um, and I just really love that. I, I think I've fallen in love with improv uh, more so now um, since I started teaching at Second City, just because the students are so wonderful there, the teachers are so wonderful, and I just love the spirit of that, where it's not about so much trying to get a laugh on stage, even though, of course, you know, you probably will get one, because laughter is a byproduct of connection and truth, and when, and it's just like life, right, just like a conversation, you never know where it's going to go, and if you come to it with that attitude, um, and I try to find improvisers that have that same attitude and comics that have that same attitude, right? Is, which is that, you know, we're, we're, we just have no idea where this is going to go. And it's about building relationship, really. So. And trust. Yeah. yeah. And trust. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Yes. So do you have aspirations to get picked up on Saturday Night Live? Because you're beautiful and still young and marketable. And Am I? Your Thank face you. is, <laughs> your, fa your face cracks me up. Your looks that you, your character. Oh, well, thank you. Um, so I've never, I'm not, uh, I never auditioned for like the main stage of Saturday Night Live, or sorry, main that. Um, I don't know. This is so interesting. When I was a kid, I was so inspired by Saturday Night Live. I was like, I, I think I, in sixth grade, I was the church lady. I did a presentation in my science class as the church lady. Like I was, <laughs> I was willing to take a lot of risks as a child. <laughs> my gosh. A lot of risks. I guess, I don't know. I just always have sort of put myself out there as like willing to fail, I guess. And I have, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I think anybody who does stand up is like, yeah, this might not go well, right? Or improv, really, too. Um, no, but I, I don't know. I don't, uh, not so much anymore. I don't know what my aspirations are now. I really like teaching. I really like, um, you know, um, helping other people see how awesome they are, especially women, especially women, you know? Absolutely. So, comic spot. I love it. I know you've loved it. Let's keep it going. I need your help. I developed it so you out there can get to know comics, whether they're brand new or 45 years in the biz. We're going to get to know them so you'll know who to love. So all I need you to do is donate to my cash app, and that is Linda Marcus Smith. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. You draw the best out of people, too. I, I don't, I mean, I hope that I, I try to, I mean, I, you know, honestly, it's just seeing in them what you wish they could see in themselves. I think wow. everyone is special, right? So, um, you know, and of course we should be following our own advice, you know what I mean? But, but thank you for the compliment. That's very <laughs> sweet of you to say, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, yeah, that I don't, I don't know if I have the desire to do that anymore. Um, but I, I've always been sort of on the, I had a, a storefront theater company in Chicago for 10 years. I just kind of like, um, and it's still there. I'm just not a part of it right now. Uh, I, I like the, the sort of more misfit kind of a thing rather than the corporate thing, even though I know I'm at Second City, but uh, the thing that drives me there is not so much the corporate and the main stage as much as it is the teaching. Awesome. So when you're doing your stand-up, do you find that acting and improv really helps you out? With and can you can you see when can you tell when comics are on stage and they have no improv or acting? Um, I I can, and I have never taken really any kind of acting or. Oh yeah. Well, I think some people are more naturally like you seem very open, right? And just sort of. Um, like open to the flow of what's coming your way. I think just some people are more naturally open that way than others. Um, and, uh, and I, uh, 
I don't know if I'm naturally that way, but I kind of learned, you know, so I recognize it in other people and I'm like, oh, you're a control freak, you know? <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. So I think that's the thing that stands out to me the most. I'm like, oh, because I, you know, we always see that stuff in other people that we have in ourselves and we, you know, dislike that. But I think that's probably what drew me to this in the first place was this fact that I was such a control, tr controlling type a person and then you know it's it was like my own therapy i guess for my ocd or whatever else i got i got anxiety i got ocd you name it you know what i mean um totally <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean it, it can the the pressure of doing it and how um how much you can sort of get down on yourself when it doesn't go well and the self-judgment and all that stuff which is just like a practice of trying to uh get over you know yes. your whole your whole life and your whole art I think that can stop people from continuing right yes they get sort of down and they can quit and and I did too I quit a bunch and but something just keeps drawing me back I think it's the people it's always been the people with performing arts I never thought that I would still be doing it in my age especially with all the failure and how like bad I was at it like <laughs> oh my gosh I was like the worst actor and like the worst improviser like still wow. oh my gosh so bad so bad so bad that like my first <laughs> class didn't even talk to me at like they <laughs> were like she was so bad we're not even gonna talk to her during the break and I was like I I it was like you know like high school or something I was like oh my god they're not talking to me unless maybe it was just in my own head but I realized pretty early on that I was pretty terrible at it and I was like oh I guess I gotta get I guess I gotta learn, you know, and uh, if I can, I'm like, if I can learn, anybody can learn, you know. Exactly. And now because, because you were, um, like you said, a self proclaimed not doing well at the beginning, that probably makes you an even better teacher. Yeah, you know what, maybe it does, because I, I see the people who are struggling with it. And I'm just like, you know, the thing is, that I, I don't know. Do you believe that people can be taught to be funny? I guess this is kind of like, you know, a debate or like it's not, there's not, do you believe people can be taught? And I'm not saying that we're teaching people to be funny with improv, but if we talk about stand up comedy, do you think that there are people that are more naturally disposed to it, predisposed to it than others? Or do you think anybody can, can do it? Well, like I was talking with a girl the other day and every time she got on a mic, uh, I would cringe. Oh, not her again. And I've taught comedy because that's what you do when you've got all of four years under your belt and <laughs> go right for it. You know, you think you're invincible and I can teach and you can't. And so, <laughs> you know, I, she found a totally different style of comedy the other day. And I told her, I've always cringed when you've come to the mic, like, oh no, not her again. <laughs> I told her <laughs> this. <laughs> And now she's found an avenue in comedy where, you know, some people are left brain, some people are right brain, some people, yeah. when they tell set up and punchline, they do it like they're a machine or a robot and other people are really good at set up punches, you know? So I yeah. think they can all be taught. That's a great point. And like some people just find, you know, their own originality, right? If they just kind of can keep sticking with it keep trying things and um you know yeah like not give up and like believe in themselves right that's that's pretty cool that she actually found that thing and it's that she's finding her own unique voice that's yeah. great yeah I still feel like I'm trying to find that with stand-up do you ever find like you're still trying to figure out what is my true voice here in this material I feel like I know who I am but in terms of like who I am on stage, it's still kind of a struggle. And that's why I really enjoy, uh, I mean, I love it because control wise, like, you know what I mean? You have all the, <laughs> if it goes well, you only have yourself to really think. And if it goes poorly, it's all, only yourself that you have to blame really. Um, not that I do that much anymore, but in the beginning, you know, like I would be like really hard on myself if improv didn't go well. And it's like, oh, you know, now I just look forward to it and just give up the control and go, let's see where this, where this takes me. Right. Don't quite have that so much with stand-up. Um, yeah. I think I'm still trying to find that. 
You, you know what? I just recently was able to do comedy without looking at my notes because of the brain trauma. Right, right. And so I also just realized what my voice is and what my persona is. It all just kind of, and it came from asking people on the street, what do you see when you look at me? What do you want a person that looks like me to say and not say? What do you think is I am like, you know? I heard that that works. That is, that's, I had a, there was an agent in Chicago uh, who said, if you want to know what your type is, go with a clipboard to, you know, a park uh, and like ask a hundred people what, what, what they think your age is and what they think your occupation is. Right. And um, that's so interesting. And I always thought I'm going to do this someday. Never did it, but that's amazing. I love that. And so like, I, I tried to relate to, young, you know, I'm 69 years old and I tried to relate to young people. And they, if I'd say something, they thought that that meant I'm racist or because of my age, I'm racist. And I'm like, I was asking young people, what do you want an old person to not say? What drives you nuts when an older person's on stage doing? Co and so I was able to create a whole set to relate to young people out of oh. that. Gosh, wow, that's so cool. Oh, wow. That's great. I love your spirit. And I love that you're doing this and that you have overcome so much. It's just like, fantastic. I think you're thank amazing. You. Thank you. I, I want and your jokes are, are so funny. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. I want to read your intro now that we're at near the oh, end. Because you know, like, it would be so disrespectful not to. Summer Austin originally hails from Des Moines. Iowa and was called maybe the most famous person at the class of 1996 Valley High School 20 year reunion. Dubbed a comedian, we all should steal from the Chicago Tribune. Summer has performed at the original Zanies in Chicago. Zanies Rosemont, Riddles Comedy Club, Flappers Comedy Club, the Chicago Women's Funny Festival, the Cates, among others, and has been a comedy producer for over 10 years and a theater film, film actor for over 20 years. She currently teaches acting at the theater school at DePaul University and at the improv at Second City Chicago and is one half of the sketch duo Ostero and co-produces producer of the Go Go Show Stand Up Comedy Showcase now in its ninth year. You can follow her all over the internet and I'll put the plugs on social media later tonight. Thank wow. you so much. I don't want to leave and if you I have know. to go, I understand. Maybe we should do this again because it was really nice talking to you. So I'll get right on and, and we'll book another time today. Yeah, and when is your next show? When do you have... Do you have another show coming up? So I when I'm going to be for performing? Yeah. Okay, I do. I'm going to be on the Good Karma Comedy Festival um, the 16th. I, I, up, I post it every day. Oh, good. So I've got the Good Karma. I'm going to be on um, a TV show in New York with my friends. It's called the Comedy Hour Online Edition. And it's a uh, Bayside Comedy Live TV I posted that just a few minutes ago. Wow. Uh, I got interviewed by Ninon, who is a two-time Emmy Award winner here in Vegas. Oh, and wow. And I'll post that in about three days. It'll come out. She's, she's an amazing, I got to learn interviewing from her and she's oh. been doing it for 30 years. Oh, that's so cool. Good for you. Well, you've got a lot of things going on. I can't wait to check out more stuff because I think you're awesome. So thank you so yeah. much, Summer. Is your first name uh, spelt that way, and that name was given to you because of Elkie Summer? Oh, I don't think so. Who is that? She's like a 1950s, 60s beauty uh, actress, singer, beauty, well, I can't believe gorgeous. I know who that is okay. That I'm gonna look her up. No, I believe that. I mean, here's the real quick story. My mother is very glamorous, <laughs> mm. so I don't think it was that this this was the glamour connection. But um, she is very beautiful and very stylish, and I think she like she really loves the warm weather and loves summertime. And I think she originally she was going to name me with a, a U, like the way it was normally spelled. And then she looked at my name written out, and she saw the second letter of 
of my last name being a U and the second letter of my sec my last name being a U. So first and last name both being a U. And she didn't like the way that looked. So she changed it to an O. So oh. she was thinking about the way that that my name looked written out. And you know, she's right. I actually wrote it like that. And I was like, this one does look better. So that's nice. the reason why. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I will get right to you on Facebook Messenger to rebook you. Oh, that sounds great. Thank you so much. It was really nice talking to you. And I'll put up all your social media late, late tonight. Okay, um, no problem. And then in three to six days, the sitcom version of this video comes out with music and credits. You'll think you're on TV. What? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That Thank you, fun. Summer. You're okay. awesome. You are too. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Love you lots. Everybody's talking.